Hi, my name is Houston Haynes. I'm here in my studio to show you the SmartAV Tango console. In this video, we're we'll looking at the flexible display configurations that are available for the Tango that not only change the look and feel of the console, but also adjust the way that the console will interact with the host. In this case, we'll be using the Tango as a front end to Steinberg's Cubase. We'll be drilling in on the Insert Plus mode, which allows visibility into VST instruments as well as quick controls. We'll also be looking at some additional features that we think you'll find really interesting. So let's take a look. So if you looked at previous videos, you will have seen the touchscreen area that's dedicated to EQ control, such as being able to switch bands on and off. You also down here in the active channel area can actually disable the EQ or re-enable. There's another thing that's, that you can do as well, which is going into a blown up view of the equalizer in a graphic mode and be able to actually change both the amount uh, and the center frequency of EQ controls directly on the touchscreen. Likewise, they've also made some changes to the output. Aside from this view here and, and the ability to control the surround field from this portion of the touchscreen, you can also use the spyglass icon here to create a much larger view of the surround field that not only allows you to use a larger area of the touchscreen, but also provides a higher resolution level than you can get from touching the touchscreen or by using the encoders directly and specifically. You can see here when I turn the encoders together for front and right and front and back and right and left, that it actually creates a zigzag pattern because of uh, the jumps in the values. You get another level of resolution from this smaller screen, but when you have this larger screen, you have, of course, a much larger grid that can create a lot more automation data, but also much smoother data. So there are certain circumstances where using the encoders is the right thing to do to take and place something statically in the surround field and letting it go. But when you have something that's very critical, um, acoustically speaking, in terms of the, the position in the surround field, you can use this larger touchscreen area to automate where it moves through the field. You can also make changes to the way this display behaves on the fly using the channel display menu here. So of course, we can set the standard view, which changes the way the inserts um, are exposed through uh, the, top, the upper section of the touchscreen. In most cases, I leave things in Inserts Plus, where you can see um, a VST and or quick controls that are assigned to each channel. But another interesting thing you can do is actually go to what's called Big Meters mode. And this actually allows the entire section to be used, as you can see, for meter feedback. You can also program the active display such as you can show. As you can see here, I have the groups and mixes assigned showing in this, but you can also change this to actually show the active channel, uh, active edit panel. So as you go through, you can actually make changes and you can see the different behaviors that you have for a particular section. So once you've made this decision, you can also set them for all blocks. But here, set that, and then close the menu. So you can actually change, make these changes on the fly. You may remember in a previous video how I commented on the edit panel on the main console covers up the active channel area as well as a touch screen area that's next to the encoders. You can actually make a change to that where you can set the edit panel to be embedded in the channel area on the main console. So you sacrifice having access to the top four sections of the channel strip, but you get an embedded view, of course, size down slightly, of the edit panel such that you can go through and actually have both the edit panel and the active channel commands available to you. And that stays resident. It doesn't disappear as soon as I touch something up. If you go to the transport panel and end up touching something on another console, you notice that it gets wiped out. Here, this always stays in front. You can also, of course, touch a, a magnified view for the output channel and it will do the overlay so you can make changes. So you can continue to do channel automation as well as making changes to the output and group assignments. Um, and then, of course, if you don't want to have this in front of you and want to continue to operate directly on the, the channel strip, for those that are 
assigned below, then all you have to do is get rid of it. So it's a really handy way to work as a dedicated editor. You're doing a dedicated editing session, or if you're just recording tracks and just touching a track, setting it to record mode and hitting record, and then having access to the edit commands as you're going and burning down tracks. So this is a very, very handy way to view the edit panels and have them directly in front of you. So now we'll drill in a little bit into Inserts Plus mode, which is a new mode for the Tango. It allows you not only to see the first six insert positions for a particular track, but it also shows you the assigned VSTi channel, whether you're using an instrument channel um, or a MIDI channel, it will show you the, the assigned VSTi for a particular slot. Here I'm going to open up Mystic, which is assigned on this instrument channel. And I also have uh, Roomworks set up. And they're, of course, both on the same channel. And what's interesting about the Quick Controls is it allows you to freely assign any of the parameters that are on a particular channel so that you can have you know, VSTi parameters for all eight, or you can have a mixture of parameters that are available across anything that's a part of that channel. Here, I'm going to go into the insert section of the parameters for the quick controls, and you can see I'm drilling into the reverb character of the first insert called Roomworks, and I'm going to select the Fusion. So I've just created the eighth parameter, which now allows me to set, along with other parameters, allows me to set the diffusion, which you can see change here. And of course, I can also change the reverb time and change the pre-delay and, of course, the size as well. can also make changes to, let's say, I have everything assigned to envelope 2, which is the primary envelope for this particular patch, so that I can control this in real time. Now, aside from the ability to control these parameters, from these encoders to be able to set the settings the way you like and then start recording. Of course, you're also recording these, you can record these as VST automation. So, as you can see, you can have a variety of parameters selected for an instrument, uh, for inserts, and be able to have immediate access to them directly through the quick controls and be able to use them like you would use any other kind of automation source. So, here's another interesting scenario where I have MIDI channels with VST as assigned. Um, in this particular case, we have uh, Geartan Personal Orchestra version 4. And again, these are MIDI channels that allow you to look directly into a VSTi that it's assigned to. So you can move down the line and select those tracks and continue to record for a multi-output VSTi. You'll notice that the window button is still highlighted for this channel and you can basically select to open and close that window anytime that you would like. So it's the same window that's being opened because all of these it's separate MIDI channels are assigned to the same VSTi instance. It gets more interesting when you go to a VST3 plugin, and here I have the integrated UI for the Motofrac XS um, VST plugin that allows the hardware of the Motofrac XS to be controlled directly through Cubase Nuendo. And what's interesting about this is as you go and select individual instruments, it actually harmonizes with the MIDI channels that are selected so that when you select the individual MIDI channel, it also goes through and selects not only the instrument that is corresponding to that MIDI channel in the multi, but it also updates the UI to show you the parameters that are available for it. So this is a quick way to go through and set parameters that allow you to either set the, the master parameters in the main window or actually open up the, the general parameters window for each individual part and go through and make the corresponding changes that are necessary as you activate each individual channel. So it's a tribute both to the Tango's implementation as well as the remote protocol behind Cubase and Nuendo that they're able to work so well together. Hopefully this video has shown you a glimpse into what that means and not only how that can help increase your workflow but also increase your creative opportunities as well. Keep an eye on smartav.net for additional videos like this one. And as always, thanks for watching.